Hydrogen soup? Does that sound delicious? Well, perhaps not for humans, but certainly for the first stars. Early in the universe, in a spectacular show of stellar supification, clouds of hydrogen atoms gathered together. They combined with one another, and the collected mass got bigger and bigger, and after a time, ignition. The first stars were alive. Well, alive in the sense that they were burning, not that they had feelings or knew what was going on or had opinions or beginning to write what would eventually become the first Onion article or anything. But where did all that gas come from? And can we spot the evidence of these long ago stars today? Well, as you know, the Big Bang got our universe off to a speedy start of expansion. It then took 400,000 years for us to see any light at all. Protons and electrons and other small particles were floating around, but it was far too hot for them to interact. But once the power of the Big Bang finally faded, these protons and electrons paired up and created hydrogen. And this is called, rather uninventingly, recombination. And I'd rather we just call it hydrogen soup. So we've got energy, but what is the secret ingredient that sparked these first stars? It was that soup clumping together over time. Now, we can't say to the minute when the first stars formed, but we have a pretty good idea. The Wilkinson Microwave Anisotropy Probe, aka WMAP, examined what happened when these clouds of hydrogen molecules got together, creating tiny temperature differences of only a millionth of a degree. So, over time, gravity began to yank matter from spots of lower density into the higher density regions, making the clumps even bigger, like fantastically bigger. So big that about 200 million years after the clumps were formed, it was possible for these hydrogen molecules to ram into each other at very high speeds. And this process is called nuclear fusion. Now on Earth, it's a way to produce energy, hopefully. Same goes for a star. With enough nuclear reactions happening, the cloud of gas compresses and creates a glow. And these stars weren't tiny, they were monsters. NASA says the first stars were 30 to 300 times as massive as the Sun, shining millions of times brighter. But this flashy behavior came at a price, because in only a few million years, the stars grew unstable and exploded into supernovae. But these stars weren't only exploding, they were also altering the soup around them. They were huge emitters of ultraviolet light, and it's a very energetic wavelength, best known for causing skin cancer. So this UV light struck the hydrogen surrounding the stars. This split the atoms apart into electrons and protons again, leaving quite a mess in space. But it's through this process that we can learn more about these earliest stars. The stars are long gone, but like a criminal fleeing the scene, they left a pile of evidence behind for their existence. And splitting these atoms was their evidence. This reionization is one key piece of understanding of how these stars came to be. So it was an action-packed time for the universe, with the Big Bang and then the emergence of the soup, and then the first stars. So it's an exciting start for our galactic history. So what do you think the first stars looked like? Thanks for watching. Never miss an episode by clicking subscribe. Our Patreon community is the reason these shows happen. And we'd like to thank Mike Blash and Alan Frum, and the rest of the members who support us, creating great space and astronomy content for the world to view for free. So if you want to get in on the action and join our community, click here. You'll get advanced access to episodes, video extras, and behind the scenes goofballery and participation in contests and other shenanigans with Jay, myself, and the rest of the team. So click right here and head on over to Patreon. Into the higher density. What? The what?